How do I retopologize a model? What is topology? How do I retopologize? What is retopology? What is topology? How do I topo? What is retopo? Can you auto retopo? Best retopo in Blender. Best retopology. Best software. How do I retopo? Oh, free software too. This is What's up guys, I'm Eric, and today we're gonna take a look at everything you've ever wanted to know about topology. Let's go. What is topology? Topology is defined as a 3D model's edge distribution and structure. Simply put, it's the surface of a 3D model and how the geometry flows over the surface of that model. Before we jump into the technical aspects of topology, why don't we take a look at the history of games and how topology's importance has grown and evolved since the beginning. Early games like Tomb Raider were extremely low poly with little need for complex topology. Oftentimes during this era, models were broken up by sections and parented to a rig, avoiding the need for soft deformation. Imagine like two pieces of wood connected with a rod and they're bending. You know, they're, they're technically deforming, but they're rigid. It's kind of like that, but instead they're just intersecting each other and there's no rod in the middle. So it was pretty scuffed. By 2003, graphics had taken a massive leap forward, allowing artists to focus more detail on places like the uh, face and joints. Characters were now capable of conveying basic emotion. The level of detail still remained fairly low, so this meant that topology was beneficial, but not critical. Fast forward to 2008, characters were more realistic than ever, with facial deformation and convincing animation. By this point, good topology was an important part of a successful character model. By the late 2010s, games had gotten increasingly closer to film in the kind of performances characters were able to give. This wouldn't be possible without special care given to topology and ensuring character edge flow supports animation. Games also began using universal base meshes that could be shared across characters. This helped in a small way to reduce the ballooning costs of game development. In real-time rendering, a GPU views all polygons as tries. However, for our sanity as artists, we view all polygons as either quads, tries, or n-gons, which is a polygon with more than four sides, each one with their individual use case. And while the final result is triangles, we more often than not build models in quads. And the reason we do this is that it's much easier to view polygons as quads because you can see the edge flow, you can see the edge loops, and it's just easier overall on your eyes to understand how a model is structured compared to the more complex nature of tries where you have lines going in every which direction. It's a lot easier to see those quads. Also, your rigor will thank you. Which one of these would you rather work on? In addition to being easier to work on, quads also have the benefit of usually yielding better results when sculpting. However, on the flip side, tries are great for optimization and are a critical part of a game ready model because you can terminate loops and do optimization tricks that you couldn't do with a model that's trying to remain all quads. What is retopology? Retopology is topology, but better. A typical workflow consists of building a high poly model and then building a low poly version around that model that you're going to project the detail onto with the use of either a normal map or a displacement map. For the reasons mentioned earlier, our low poly model will often have different technical requirements than the mesh we used for sculpting. In this case, we build a new model with retopology. There is a dozen different pieces of software you can use to retopologize. You could painfully do it in ZBrush. No, seriously, don't. You could use Maya's QuadDraw or a plugin for Blender called RetopoFlow. You could also use specialized software like my personal favorite, TopoGun. Or if you're feeling lazy, you can sit on the couch and use Cozy Blanket. However, no matter what software you choose, the basic premise of how these programs operate is almost identical. You load a high poly reference mesh and then you begin drawing polygons onto that mesh. And what happens is that the new polygons actually magnetize to the surface of your reference mesh, allowing you to capture the silhouette of your model. This gives you a lot of control because you can choose exactly where those new polygons go. Once you're finished, you can export your model and you have a new version of your character. At this point, you might be wondering why you can't use a automatic retopology tool like ZeroMesher or use a retopology modifier in Max. And the shorter answer is you absolutely can. And like we mentioned earlier, this is why the application matters. If you're just doing something for personal work or you just need something really quick and dirty, an automatic retopology tool is gonna get you really, really good results. And sometimes you can even start with an automatic retopology tool and then hand clean it up. 
But oftentimes in production and especially in games, you have very strict performance budgets and very strict technical limitations that you're trying to adhere to that you're almost always going to use manual topology. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The first being that as good as automatic retopology tools have gotten, they can't always make the exact decisions an artist is gonna make in terms of how to best capture the silhouette of your model based on your target polygon count. And while these tools have ways to like say focus detail on the face or on the fingers, an artist is always gonna make better decisions when it comes to optimization. For example, an artist can choose to collapse loops in hidden areas like the mouth cavity or the lower back or areas where you might not see very often. An artist may also choose to build the edge loops around joints in a certain way that the automatic remesher doesn't account for. Now we know what topology is and we know what retopology is, but what is good topology? To answer this, we have to break it into two categories. What is technically good and what is artistically good? For the artistic aspect, we kind of answered this in the previous section, but it's making sure that the silhouette and shape of your model is accurately represented and looks good. When planning out good topology, there are three major things to keep in mind. Topology affects the way your mesh is shaded. In this example, while the left side is fewer polys, the right has more nuanced shading. However, if you are using a normal map, the shading would be overwritten. Topology affects the way your mesh deforms. Without good topology, animators would not be able to create a character that moves believably. Good topology uses only as much geometry as needed to create a shape. Good topology often strikes a balance between three major categories. Optimization. Is the topology focused on serving the silhouette or focusing on being good for sculpting? This is basically asking, is it a game model or is it a sculpting model? And those are gonna have different requirements based on your needs. A sculpting model isn't worried about optimization. It can be as high poly it needs to be. It's not a big deal. A game model has very specific technical requirements that it's aiming to achieve. Distribution, how are the polygons distributed among the surface? For example, you could have more polygons in high detail areas like the face or the fingers, or you could have it more evenly distributed along the model. When you're building something like a base mesh, more often than not, you have an even distribution of polygons throughout your model. Sometimes you might go more detailed in the face if you're trying to get a high degree of micro detail. Edge flow. Edge flow is how the edge loops flow through a model. In character modeling, you can often intuit how the edge loops flow on a model based on the underlying anatomy and musculature. So you can think about how the smile lines flow around a face or how the deltoid flows into the shoulder and your edge loops will often replicate that kind of muscle anatomy. In sculpting, having good edge flow lets you reduce the amount of times you have to subdivide an object to get the detail you need. Think of it as cutting something against or with the grain. For example, when you're subdividing on a model, if all of the topology is going in the opposite direction that you're trying to sculpt a curve on, you're gonna have to subdivide it a lot more to be able to get a smooth stroke. Whereas if the topology is going in the direction that you're trying to draw your stroke, it's going to take a lot fewer subdivision levels to get a nice result. And so having topology that goes in the direction that you're trying to sculpt is gonna benefit you greatly. One side effect of directing edge flow is what is called stars. Stars are where two loops split into different directions, resulting in a star or a five-sided vert. These are perfectly okay. And typically you wanna keep a star to only five edges. If you have a star that's coming to like six or seven or eight or nine points, you're giving a lot of weight to that vert in terms of deformation. So you kind of want to keep it limited, but they are unavoidable in certain areas of edge flow and topology. In production, the main benefit of edge flow and good topology is for deformation. So having those edge loops flow in ways that make sense for the character and make sense for the anatomy and musculature, it's going to make it much easier for that character to deform. Here's a couple examples how you might balance topology in different situations. A sculpting mesh is fairly forgiving and optimization is not super important. In rendering, while using good techniques will make your life easier and help things go faster, you can brute force it. Keep in mind, this is for static images. With animation, good edge flow would still matter. A game character requires a high degree of optimization and must be built assuming it will be animated. While Unreal wants us to believe we can make everything 10 million polys, it's still good practice to only use what you need. Another important thing to consider is that when you give a game engine a model, it'll determine which direction to cut a quad into two tries. So not all programs and software treat this the same. So while 
Maya might be shading your quad in a certain direction. When it goes into an engine like Unity or Unreal, it might shade in a different way because it, it's calculating how to cut that quad differently. In these cases, an artist may hand triangulate certain areas so that it's guaranteed that a quad or a polygon will shade in the correct way. By combining all of these principles, we can make good decisions when retopologizing our characters. I hope this video was helpful and gave you a basic understanding of what topology is and how it works. In future videos, we can take a look at more specific strategies in software like TopoGun or QuadDraw or even Blender because I'd love to get into that. But for this one, I just wanted to give a basic overview, basically trying to help people understand why topology is important and what it has an impact on. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. If you have questions or comments, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and I try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time and don't stop creating. Take care.